All right, and welcome to the mix. A yes. little bit of a change up today, <laughs> in that we have Josh behind, yes. uh, in front of the camera now, and actually Chris has switched spots yes, he behind has. the camera. That's because Josh, you filled in for me Sunday. We'll get to all that in a little bit. But the first question is this: I need to know this. <laughs> Does Chris like last? Just last week, we got your name. Yes. And your new name is what? Over easy. <laughs> over easy. Only for this show, but over easy. I hear there might even be T-shirts in the works and all that stuff. <laughs> we're working we're gonna, on that. We're yeah, gonna market all of that. And so <laughs> uh, but so since Chris is behind the camera, does he inherit the name Over Easy, or how does that work? See, see we talked about this. Seeing how I'm, I'm still executive producer, even though I get to be on the side of the screen today. Um, so Chris is actually my assistant executive producer. Um, so he's not Over Easy, but he's Sunny Side Up. So we got Sunny Side Up behind the camera today. Um, work in the assistant executive producer role. <laughs> and dealing with all these guys, I think I'm scrambled eggs. Just kidding. Uh, listen, uh, we're getting in the holiday spirits around here. I know that it's crazy. November's right around the corner, but also we had a little bit of cold weather today and a little bit tomorrow. It's going to mm -hmm. be nice. Uh, so we're kind of getting in the holiday spirits. We had a couple of meetings yesterday. I already yes. pulled out the Christmas candy. By the way, these are already available in the store, even though Halloween hasn't even passed. Mm -hmm. uh, getting in the holiday spirit, a lot that's going to be going on we're going to be talking about for the future. Mm -hmm. But first, coming up tomorrow, our first big event yes. uh, in the near future. Just talk about tomorrow night real quick. Absolutely. We have our trunk or treat going on tomorrow night from 6.30 to 7.30. It's going to be a great time. We have so many families, so many kids on campus getting to come hang out with us as we uh, have candy, have games, and uh, have a little trunk competition. So uh, you guys do not want to miss it. Got a lot of fun stuff going on. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win the competition. I heard you um, had the A game coming. I, I'm, I'm coming. I'm bringing it. So uh, if you're coming, you need to be ready. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Trunk or treat tomorrow night, 6.30 to 7.30. You do do not want to miss it. And then, um, so, and, and and with that, we like like we said, Halloween's coming up. It's um, after that, we we've got no, we're in November. It's coming up. So, uh, heard have some pretty cool outreach stuff coming up. You know, it's crazy for me to think that literally coming up just two days from now, we're going to be hitting November. And in particular, if you've never been around Ridge Point Church at all before, uh, we're privileged every year to be able to work with Impact Ministries, and and they work with churches all over our area. Being able to provide hot meals to over 5,000 people Thanksgiving Day. And these are literally, we pack the meals, these hot meals, and we deliver it to people's homes. Uh, we've been doing this for as long as I've been here. So going on at least 9 or 10 years we've been doing this. It kind of became our niche as a church to say we want to take on the task of preparing all the green beans. So starting this coming Sunday, we haven't announced this yet, but starting this coming Sunday, we're collecting these gallon cans of green beans. Uh, now, we're in charge of opening all these up, so we don't want those <laughs> little cans of green beans because we'd be there, like, till next Thanksgiving opening yeah. them up. Uh, so the big cans of green beans, uh, actually this year, we got this from Sam's Club. Members Mark actually has their own brand out now. So they're a little bit less expensive than they've been in the past. But if you want to go to Sam's Club or, or maybe get the high-quality ones right here at Publix, uh, if you don't <laughs> make the trek into Lakeland. But get start picking up gallon cans of green beans. As a church, we need to purchase 250 of these. And then the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, uh, we'll be there in Eloise opening these cans up as a team. Uh, so we need a team of people there. You're also going to have a chance to volunteer to serve and all that. Uh, but kind of our niche as a church is to take care of the green beans and to cook them for them on Wednesday. So if you want more information, feel free to contact us. Uh, and if you want to start bringing cans of green beans, that would be awesome because we need 250 of those by uh, probably the next three weeks. Yeah. So really cool. By the way, we don't have all the details on this, but that same week, Thanksgiving week, we're going to be part of, a, of an outreach in downtown Winter Haven. Just a special service for business leaders in, th in, in Winter Haven to have a Thanksgiving service that Monday, sometime around noon. Mm -hmm. We'll have more details on that. But kind of reserve that date, Monday uh, over Thanksgiving week. We'll have a special being involved in the community for Thanksgiving. Now, we're, we're talking about holidays, JJ, and we got a, we got a big one coming up after Thanksgiving. Already Man. seeing all the stuff <laughs> out over at Walmart, trying to get decorations. we got the... Christmas cookies. Um, That's right. What's, what, what are we talking about for Christmas? Uh, first of all, this is not a cookie. This oh, is a sorry, I mean, chocolate. Sorry, this the cookies is so are over there. Better. <laughs> we, did, we did have cookies out as well. Yeah. Because yesterday, we actually had two teams here meeting, uh, planning out some of the stuff around Christmas. Uh, one of the more exciting nights I've ever had in terms of planning uh, here at Ridgepoint Church, we had a team marketing and team that was doing sort of creative stuff and just had some really good meetings. Uh, we're going to be giving a lot of information about this uh, coming out some stuff, some special stuff. We're going to be doing some big stuff. 
But the main thing I want to let everybody know right now, a couple of months in advance, just as you start to make your preparations, is we're going to do something a little bit different this year in that we're going to have Christmas Eve is on a Sunday, and we believe this is probably the best chance we've had in a long time to really reach out and reach a bunch of, a bunch of people in our community. So we're going to be holding three services on Christmas Eve that Sunday. Uh, so just so that you kind of in your plans know that we're trying to start up some new Christmas traditions in our area. And one of the things we want to be part of that tradition is Christmas at Ridgepoint Church. Uh, we're going to brand it a little bit differently. You'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. Two things we need from you. Number one is we need help marketing this event. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit this coming Sunday, getting the word out, out about what we're doing. But the second, and this is for every one of us, we need everyone. If we want to reach our whole community, we need you reaching out, letting people know about this. But also we need everyone serving in some capacity on Christmas Eve. Uh, even if maybe that isn't your thing, you haven't served in the past, this is a great, fun environment. And for everybody that serves this year, we have a special gift for you. Uh, just as our way of saying thanks. Again, this coming Sunday, I'll share all those details with you. Uh, but mark it right now, Christmas Eve, three services. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Man. I heard new cars possible. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you, Josh. Yeah. Only for you. Listen, um, yesterday we kind of began a new series here at Ridgepoint Church, and, and, and it's about this idea of, of I can handle it. I can handle those problems. I can handle those, even those Goliaths. Mm -hmm. um, and, and along with that, we're also, most of our groups, or all of our groups, are starting a, a series called Goliath Must Fall in Their Groups. Now, the great thing about this, this study was actually written by Louis Giglio. He's a pastor up in the Atlanta area at Passion City Church. Uh, also started the Passion Movement, Passion Conferences, and all that. It's been incredible, the work that he's done. But this is just a really good study about facing the Goliaths in our life. And as we face those Goliaths, one of the things that, that we have to realize is that um, we need to have other people around us. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you're not a part of a group. A lot of groups this week, because of Trunk or Treat, are taking the week off. So it'd be awesome if you still want to connect with a group. Uh, just to let us know that email, uh, chris at ridgepointchurch.org. Uh, and, and he would love to be able to get with you or sunny side up at ridgepointchurch.org. I'm not sure what it is. Chris might work better. <laughs> It'll probably get through better if you do that. Uh, but... I was waiting for a sound effect at that point. <laughs> or something, I don't or know. Or a sizzling egg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a great study. If you want to join groups, email chris at ridgepointchurch.org. Uh, great way to be able to do life together. We believe we are truly better together. So great way to do that. But Josh, thanks for filling in. I got yeah, a chance absolutely. because you were there, man. <laughs> I got a chance to hang out with RPC Kids yesterday and awesome. hang with Tabitha and Michael. They did a great job kind of leading it. I was kind of crowd control, kind of hanging out, making sure. I was, I was a bouncer back yeah. there. But we didn't need that. The kids were actually great. I had a great time. So anybody who's afraid of working in kids' area, you're missing out because it's... We don't actually have a bouncer role. They're perfect Yes. Kids. <laughs> it wasn't really intimidating <laughs> at all. Uh, I, I really had a good time. And some of the kids blew me away. Like, mm. you know, they're talking about, like, what, what did we talk about last week? And I'm thinking, like, I don't even remember what I talked about last week. And, and these kids, like, right away, we talked about stewardship, and, and they had answers to all oh, the questions. Cool. And I'm like, dude, y'all are rocking it. And these, it was anywhere from kindergarten through fifth grade mm -hmm. and, and different groups. And you know, the ones that were answering were, like, second and third graders. Like, oh, blew me awesome. away. Like, I said, you know, never mind. Um, so, but, but Josh, I, again, thank you for yeah. being willing to fill in. Um, one of the quotes from the Goliath Must Fall book was this, don't allow what's been done for you to be bigger than what Jesus did for you. Mm. Now, yesterday you talked about Philippians chapter 4 and, and, and literally being content in all things. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and Paul says, uh, there's times I did well mm. and I prospered. There's times I struggled. Uh, but I learned to be content. Mm. Uh, so based upon that quote, don't allow what's been done for you to be bigger than what Jesus did for you, and, the, and then Philippians 4, mm -hmm. can you dig into that a little bit deeper for us? Yeah, absolutely. I actually love um, love that quote, and especially kind of along with what we just finished up, finding our way back to God, that series we did, which is a really awesome time. really appreciate um, just everything you, you do, JJ, and, and, and sharing that with us. Um, but what's really cool to me about that is, is as we talked about, as we have this long, we, we, we have this longing for God. We come to a point where we start, we have this longing for something, we get to a certain point where circumstances come up and all those things happen we get to the point where like maybe, maybe God, God's it or he's, he's maybe only it so we start trying to try those things out and, and so often we find that and we find our way back to God but often as we get in our Christian walk we, we face circumstances again we face things tough tough, strategies, tough struggles later and we're kind of like I mean what, what do I do with that what I love about that is just realizing just as before when we realize man I'm, I'm at the end of my, my road I'm trying to figure out life and the only thing for me is, is, is God we figure out that I mean he's bigger than all these things coming at us but we come to Jesus and we start facing Still struggle. Some some struggles come back up, or some things happen. Like I thought it would be better here, and and what happens so often is we forget how big 
and how awesome our Jesus is and how big, how much bigger than these giants and circumstances coming at us. And um, what I love about that is just remembering and coming back and going, you know what, no, Jesus is still bigger than these things. He's bigger than whatever happens to me. What, what he did is bigger than these things, what's been done to me and what's going to happen to me. Jesus is still bigger and he's going to come through again. I, I, really, I really love that. It's awesome. And I love how that kind of laid the foundation for where we're going to go in this series. Yeah. And so really looking forward to kind of get a chance to finish up the series and talk through some of these things. And so uh, I love that foundation that, because I think that's something we all struggle with. Yeah. I think for, for myself, for Josh, for, for you back behind the camera, um, there are moments where, like I get the central truth you communicated mm -hmm. yesterday. I, I get this idea that our confidence can't be in our circumstances. I, I get that, and yet if I'm honest, it's something that I struggle with. It's something you probably struggle with. Yeah. Uh, something, maybe not Chris. <laughs> yes. yeah. Chris doesn't have any of those. <laughs> uh, we all struggle with confidence. Yeah. And it's because we've had circumstances in our past where uh, we, we made a bad choice or somebody hurt us. Mm -hmm. and, and it led to a, a loss of confidence. Maybe it, it, it hurt our self-worth. Yeah. And we started to struggle. And, and even though I know in my mind the central truth that mm -hmm. my confidence can't find my circumstance and that, that I'm greater than those circumstances, the truth is in my heart, I, I allow those feelings to get in the way. Mm -hmm. So I want to know from a practical standpoint, yeah. you gave some some practical things yesterday. Yeah. I thought that was it was honest, it was refreshing. Mm -hmm. But what are some practical things if we're trying to say right now, my confidence can't be in my circumstances? Mm -hmm. What are some practical things that, that we can do? I, I think I think one thing for sure is, and this is actually really fun. We were talking to students last night about um, a little bit about this, but our feelings often sometimes can can lie to us, or our feelings can can can. Can deceive us, you know, and so so they're they're real, they're they're valid, but there's sometimes that when we face tough things that, that our feelings start to really what what push against that idea that man Jesus is bigger than this. God God has got us through it, and um, you know, like we said yesterday, one of the one of the big things is is once again the word, you know, like 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 having that intentional time with God. A big part of that is it's a consistent reminder that this is the truth. That even even though I might feel different. God is still bigger than this. He's bigger than my feelings. I actually love uh, Romans 8.1. It says there's no combination for those that are in Christ Jesus. And as we follow Jesus, and it says that it doesn't just mean that from the sense of what other people are saying about me, other things. It also means my own feelings. What my own feelings are saying as a Christ follower, that you're not good enough, you stink, all those things. That There's no condemnation. That's not true. That, that's, a, that's a lie. And, and mm. having that time with God is actually really, really important and big to kind of have that, even though my feelings are saying one thing, to remind myself that, you know, my feelings are saying this, but... But that's not true, and being able to to hold on to that truth over sometimes how I feel, which is so hard. It, it is tough. I, I struggle with that so much. Uh, you know, Jay's are talking about like different things. I'm trying to think back to like specific times it's happened. There's like, man, it's it's happened so much. I'm not even quite sure about the specific. But what always brings me back isn't like, okay, well, one day my feelings change. It's God, even though I'm feeling this way, I know that your your you you're still your love is still true. Your grace is still true, and that you're still bigger than this. But but a huge part of that is taking that time to, to be with God, to talk with Him, to, to get in the Word and kind of go and, and have that reminder, that truth in, in my face going, you know, I don't feel this right now, but this is still true. Um, it, it's a huge thing. And, and even along with this, what I, what I love about the series and, and kind of the whole U version Bible app, which I can't remember if I, I said to someone after service or if it's in one of the messages, but um, one of the things I've been doing even recently is getting the Bible app and, and using the plans there. And they actually have a seven-day plan for the Goliath Most Fall series. Mm -hmm. So, um, that might be a good start just to kind of use that to, to, to propel ourselves into that. I mean, I, I want to have this attention time with God. I want to get closer to him and see the truth. Even sometimes over my feelings and my circumstances are, are seeming insurmountable that, man, God, you're, you're, you're bigger than these and, and your truth is bigger than my feelings at times. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe try that out. Maybe try that Goliath Must Fall series or, or just get in the word and, and, and spend some time with him. It's, it's yeah. really huge and helps kind of battle some of those feelings that our circumstances can bring up. Yeah. I think that that's a brilliant truth that a lot of times the reason our confidence is shot is because we listen to other people's mm -hmm. view of us mm. instead of God's view of us. Yeah. Uh, for some of us, you know, maybe you're bullied when you're younger mm. and, and someone says something mean about you and, and you've always listened to that person's interpretation of who you are mm. and never read God's word for yourself to discover who God yeah. created you to be. Uh, and so I, I love that. Um, by the way, just as we get ready to wrap up, we believe strongly at Ridgepoint Church that we want to be about uh, allowing people to take next steps in their life. Uh, and, and everyone's next step looks a little bit different. Uh, but there are some kind of markers along the way. And we have a chance over the next three weeks to be able to hit some next steps in people's lives. Uh, starting up this coming Sunday, we have an environment called Discover RPC. Discover RPC is if you're brand new to Ridgepoint Church or if you've never uh, connected in, in a way that you say, yes, I want to become a partner, become a part of Ridgepoint Church. Mm. Uh, Discover RPC is a chance to kind of hear from the staff, hear our heart and why we do ministry uh, and a chance to hang out and, and get to know what Ridgepoint Church is all about. That happens this coming Sunday. 
immediately following the second service. So sometime right around uh, 12 o'clock, we get started. We come upstairs. We have child care provided. We have food provided. That's the big one right there. Yeah, that's Apple right. <laughs> if we have food, we can be there. So uh, we just ask you, let us know if you're going to be here just so we can prepare for that, both for child care and for food. Uh, email chris at ridgepointchurch.org or email me, jj, at ridgepointchurch.org. Uh, let us know you're interested in being there for Discover RPC. The following Sunday... I believe that's November 12th, if, if my numbers are correct, is our child dedication. Uh, this happens at 5 o'clock, and it isn't just a baby dedication. If you watched last week's episode, Tanya kind of popped up out of nowhere, and, <laughs> and she shared all about child dedication. Uh, but a chance just to, to say, man, I want to raise my children in an environment where, where Jesus is honored, and I want to raise them the right way. And it's a special service uh, just for the family and friends. Uh, so if you want to have your child be dedicated November 12th, uh, email Tani at ridgepointchurch.org or let her know about that. Uh, there's some things you have to do in preparation for that, so you want to get on that soon. And uh, finally, um, in between that, I, I, I had baptism. Baptism. Because <laughs> well, baptism is the same week as child dedication. Yes, That's what I've been throwing off. My bad. <laughs> I was looking at those dates and like, wait, those are the same day. I got you now. Uh, baptism is also happening November 12th that morning in both services. We already have some people lined up for baptism. Yes. But if you've made that decision to follow Christ and have never taken that step of obedience and baptism, uh, November 12th, we're going to be having baptism celebration here at Ridgepoint Church. We'd love for you to participate. Uh, again, you can email myself, jj at ridgepointchurch.org or chris at ridgepointchurch.org to be able to find out information about baptism. Uh, so really, it is a, it's a great celebration to be a part of Ridgepoint awesome. Church. Uh, so again, thanks for checking us out. Don't forget, this coming Sunday, we want to see you at 9 or 1045 as we get into week two of I Can Handle It. <laughs> I was assuming he was done, but I'm like, I'm